Good evening, everybody. How you doing? All right, all right. Well, there's a little bit more to that story with Chris. After, after we met, we had uh, several opportunities to sit down and talk, actually quite a few hours worth of talks uh, to be specific, and uh, Chris proposed. And before he gave me any of the details, I said, oh, sure, I'll do it. He said, here's the catch. You get 15 minutes, no podium, no notes. I want you to be close to the audience, and oh, by the way, know your military, know you love slides, no slides. So we made a compromise, and three slides is, is what I have. Three slides. And here are my notes. And uh, I uh, actually transitioned out of the Marine Corps on the first of this month. So my, my podium is right here. My, uh, my podium is uh, this beard that will probably not last too much longer, provided my kids a lot of entertainment. So uh, with that, in order to stay on point, because Chris gave me a hard 15 minutes, I've got my little notes, so I apologize in advance if I have to look at them to keep, uh, keep myself on target here. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, on, on that note, when he, when he gave me the hard 15 minutes, I, I thought of Mark Twain's quote, which is, I'm sorry I wrote you a long letter. I did not have time to write you a short one. So uh, I had to do a lot of thinking over the last couple of weeks of how I uh, distill this all the way down to the, the important points. Uh, but I really believe what uh, Chris and the folks here at Clever Talks are uh, trying to approach and to uh, achieve is, is very righteous. And uh, with that, if you could uh, pull my first slide up, please. All right. So the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Pablo Picasso. And uh, I recently came across this quote, and uh, it actually put a lot of things in perspective for me. And uh, we will revisit this this quote here at the end, if you could uh, push to the next slide. Uh, nope, pop it back up, please. All right, we'll just leave it there. I will leave it there, that's just as well. Uh, so everybody talks about goal setting, and at, at times it can uh, sound a bit cliche, and uh, even when I, when I bring it up at times, kind of roll your eyes and you're like, goal setting up, here we go again. Um, well, I will, I will tell you, uh, for somebody like me, uh, over the last three years, uh, is there's very one clear, distinct goal, uh, and it's called uh, content. And content has uh, three meanings in the dictionary, and the one I'm most fond of is the adjective description of content, and uh, it's a state of peaceful happiness. And that's going to be juxtaposed against another uh, saying that I'm, I'm apt to tell my boys almost on a daily basis, I have two boys, one 13 and one 15. Uh, to do that, you have to fight, yourself every day to win in life. And I'll break those down into two compartments. The fight part is fight morally and ethically, enthusiastically, with a lot of effort, a lot of character, and personal responsibility. And that right there is a whole talk in and of itself. The second half is more important, and it's the win part. And where uh, I break that down is uh, really into four things, winning in life and finding your life's wealth. Uh, four four key points, and I have a little, one large story, which will be broken down into four sections that will describe the four pieces, which is lifelong learning, helping others, meaningful relationships, uh, I'm sorry, meaningful experiences and quality relationships. So a little bit about me. From August 1st of 2012 until approximately November 15, I was in that state of content, that state of peaceful happiness, if you will. I had literally everything that I could want. I had just been selected for command, which for a Marine Corps officer, really any officer in the armed services is the, absolutely the pinnacle for somebody of that rank, lieutenant colonels. And just as a, as a general frame of reference, how many military, foreign military in here by show of hands? Okay, so those of you who've, who've been around that, you get it, you know it. Uh, my wife was working on her doctorate degree through University of Southern California, chased in her lifelong dream of educational leadership. And I had two young boys at the time who were absolutely just forces of nature. And they were everything that I could ask for in two children. Life was great. And oh, by the way, we were living in Hawaii at the time. So uh, nobody, nobody, yeah. felt, nobody felt bad for us, right? Uh, well, for that period, I would literally find myself driving to and from work often daydreaming at work thinking, gosh, it cannot get any better than this. Honestly, I, I'm exactly where I want. I, I don't want for anything. I'm happy. I'm content. 15 November, I uh, had the pleasure of speaking 
at a retirement ceremony for a friend of mine by the name of uh, Master Sergeant Paul Harvey. Yeah, Paul Harvey, that was his name. Wonderful, wonderful American. And he actually asked me to, uh, to conduct his retirement ceremony. And it was uh, on the battleship Missouri in Pearl Harbor, where he wanted it. And uh, it was one of the first really big events that I was going to do uh, to prepare myself for my, my upcoming position. And uh, it meant a lot to me because I, I think the world of Paul. And uh, I remember asking my wife, I'm like, hey, hey darling, can you, can you come to this event because you're a really good gauge of, uh, of, of how things are and how I'm doing when I'm speaking. And uh, I remember picking her up or actually seeing her walking down the walk towards the battleship Missouri. And something wasn't right. It was just when you've been with somebody since you were 15 years old, you kind of know what they do, what they say, how they walk. Something wasn't right. So uh, that was the 15th of November. On the 16th of November, when I took her to the hospital, come to find out that, fast forward to Monday on the 18th of November, uh, the doctors who had uh, been working with my wife since we had arrived in Hawaii said, uh, we we're very sorry to tell you, but your wife has one year to live. And uh, so you get that news, and you know it's bad when the doctor who is telling you is very emotional about it. Because we had been living as a family with that, with Carrie's uh, brain tumor since 2003. Our boys were in diapers. So they had grown up with that. But we had, we felt like we had beaten it, quite frankly. She had had surgery in 2006 about a 15 hour surgery, she was an absolute warrior. An hour of that surgery, she was awake, so they could map her brain up at University of California, San Francisco. They did an amazing job. So to get that news was very, very sobering on many, many fronts, and that's the understatement of understatements. Walked back in on Tuesday, and they told us after taking some scans, we know we told you a year, we actually think it's about six months. Fast forward about a week and a half, and they said, you said six months. This could be months, maybe weeks. But when they told us that, because Carrie was sitting right next to me, Carrie looked right at me, and she said, Brian, you've been around the world. You've seen a lot of crazy things. Never once have you asked for counseling. She's like, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you right now, and I'm looking at you right in the eyes and saying, open yourself up to that and allow yourself to learn more about how to deal with this because you are going to be the one leading these boys after I'm gone. So that's, that's point number one, if you will, about lifelong learning. At a point like that, she was right on when she said, you have to learn more about yourself. And you have to have the courage to accept that vulnerability in that place that you're going to put yourself in to go through counseling as a family, as individuals, take your kids through it. And uh, it's, it, it was tremendously, tremendously strong uh, piece of advice from her. So lifelong learning. That second day that we were in there and they told us that, that she had about six months to live, uh, we had been planning a trip. And again, this sounds so so crazy when you look back at it and, and even more crazy to talk about it. We had been planning for a long time because we knew we had only so much time left in Hawaii before we received our orders out here, was to go to Maui for Thanksgiving. And before I even finished the question of the doctor about is she still okay, because she even brought up to me about can we still go to Maui for Thanksgiving and take the family. And before I even got that statement out of my mouth, the doctors were on it. They said, absolutely go. Because basically what they were telling us is you only have so many more opportunities to make memories with your family. But when we got on the plane, she was walking. By the time we got back on the plane several days after Thanksgiving, it ended, she was in a wheelchair. But the message from that trip was it is, uh, fascinating. Uh, I, I had the opportunity, you know, you get to your breaking points, and there were several during this journey all the way around where we were, we were sitting at, at, the, at the resort we were, and honestly, I, I had to escape for a little bit. I just, I could not take it. She was putting up a great face. I'll be straight away honest, it, it, had, it had gotten to me. 
and I remember running off. Then how many has anybody been to Maui or pictures? And so you know where the channel is, where all the waves, go, where all the whales go through uh, when they're when they're traversing up and down uh, the Pacific. Well, I remember pulling out my phone and I called a, a very very close friend of mine, and uh, his wife was tremendously close with my wife, and his name was uh, Andy Person. And uh, I called him. I was in a desperate state by that point. And the reason I called Andy is because a few year, few short years earlier, he had lost his wife to melanoma, and they had five kids. And uh, I remember being on that phone call, and there were two two key points that came out of that phone call for me. He said, first, he said, Brian, you're going to spend the rest of your life trying to figure out how to get to the top of the mountain. He said, that mountain's steep, and it's hard, and every day you've got to fight, and you've got to win every single day. It's like, all right. He said, but the second thing is, and he said, this one took me, and this is Andy speaking, about two to two and a half years to figure out, was you're already grieving, but the way to accelerate your grieving is to help others. He said, the more you help others, he said, this isn't selfish in, in, in its concept, he said, but the more you help others, the more you're helping yourself. The more you help others, the more you can help yourself. And that really resonated with me because Carrie had lost her mom uh, when she was a freshman in college. And I was amazed at how resilient she was and how incredible she was in her approach as a, as a, as a college freshman and how she fought through that and was just absolutely magnificent. I was in awe of her at a, at a young age, but part of the way that she got through it is she was the consummate helper. She was always looking to do for others. So Andy saying that and me observing that many years prior helped me, it really helped me resonate. And I will tell you, giving to others and helping others and being there for others has helped me immensely throughout this whole process. So coming back to, uh, to uh, Oahu, where we were clearly all the counselors were getting very much engaged with us and, and telling us and, and working with me. And a, a, along the way there, the, the one counselor who is now a, a tremendous personal friend of mine, Dr. Paul White, he, uh, he said, you know, I'm going to tell you something that's going to seem totally outrageous when I tell you this. He's like, but your grieving is going to go a lot faster than what you would think. And I, and I, I was puzzled. I, I couldn't comprehend that at, at that time. And he said, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I had the opportunity to know Carrie. And this was only after a few short weeks. Um, he said, uh, you absolutely had tremendously meaningful experiences throughout your life. You guys have been around the world together. You have great kids. You clearly have not you've left no stone unturned. You have absolutely everything that you can to each other, and he said what typically holds people up in their grieving processes is the regret and the questioning and the wondering why, why can I, what, what could I have done better? That person's gone now, I can't make anything up with them. And uh, you know what, true to form, he was, he was spot on. When I, when I really look back at my resiliency through the process, I think he had it, he had it spot on. But then, what you come to find is uh, things even move faster than what they tell you. So on day 28, uh, December 13th to be exact, uh, my two boys come in, kiss mom goodbye because they were going off to school. They still had to go to school. We wanted to keep as much normalcy and routine as possible. And uh, shortly after the boys left, Carrie had what I would term a significant brain event where the, the full gambit. We got her to the hospital, and by the end of that day, the doctors had to sit us down and say, listen, she is brain dead. What are you going to do? And I remember sitting at the foot of her bed, or standing at the foot of her bed with a close mentor of mine, Colonel Javier Nerf Ball, and uh, aviator, super cool, tremendous mentor, somebody who literally would call me at 2 in the morning to check up on me. And the reason is, is he had lost his son several years prior. And we were standing at the foot of the bed, and, and he looked at me, and he said, there is nothing harder that you will do in your life than what you're about to do right now. Because he had to do the same thing for his son. Five days later, after her, her body had no more fight left in her, she passed away. So from flash to bang, as we say in the military, 33 days. 
But on that 28th day, which was the 13th, about two days later, I remember looking outside the hospital window out to Honolulu, out to Diamond Head. And, I, and it's just one of the craziest thoughts is I was looking out there and I was thinking, you know, there's thousands of people who are living their life stream right now out, out in Honolulu. Think about the amount of money people have saved throughout their life to, to get there and make the trip and go do all the great things. And looking at Diamond Head, absolutely majestic. And, and I remember thinking, they are all in heaven and I am absolutely in hell. But then, right at that same moment, a thought came into my head because we were at the height of everything going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I remember through all of my training, one of the things that we learned with all the returning vets who were injured is that you can never separate the soldier, sailor, airman, or marine from their team because that is the biggest part of their recovery is being with their team. And right at that time, I turned around and, and in the hospital, there, in that room, there was a mirror and I found myself looking at myself. And I thought, okay, I can't separate myself from my team. I have so many quality relationships. That is my team. They're the ones who are going to help me get through this. And it, it, might, it might seem a little cliche, but that's absolutely the truth. Truth. All those quality relationships, when I was in those deep, dark places, which I'm sure many of you and, and points in your lives have been there, I had a lot of hands down there pulling me back up. And I think it all stems from the fact that I made myself open, I left myself open, I kept with Carrie's spirit of, you know, you got to have the courage to do this. So if you could pull to the next slide, please. There you go. So back to the, the meaning of life is to find your gift, the purpose of life is to give it away. And the juxtaposition of being on the mountain of content versus fighting yourself every day to win. Well, I will tell you, there's really only two things associated with this talk that truly, truly will tug at my heartstrings and get me emotional right now. It's thinking about those two boys growing up without their mom. Absolutely magnificent, magnificent woman. But the second thing, and this is the part where I'm going to tie this all together, is Carrie was a lifelong educator. And every time I thought about the literally thousands of people she could touch that was going to be lost by her passing, that really, really set me back a bit. Until recently, when somebody like Chris walks up and says, hey, can you talk about a breaking point? And I said, you know what? By God, I think I can talk about a breaking point. So my gift to all of you is Carrie and all the lessons she taught me. Thank you.